What is an indie game? Uh, That's a really tricky question. So it's usually a small team, um, and a team that is relying on their creativity and limited resources a lot of times to uh, make something they've always wanted to do without, inter you know, without interference from someone else telling them how to do it. I think for indie games, there's a higher chance that people are making the games they really want to make. But really, it's just all about creating something unique and different that you wouldn't usually see in a big budget game. Limited resources and infinite time in some cases allows you to uh, focus on what's really important. Drill down, there's not excess there. You know, we don't have marketing companies, we don't have marketing budgets. It's all us getting out there and talking to people uh, like on the street. Before PAX, there was this void somewhat of really being able to have the developers meet the gamers face to face. The age of the internet and the age of digital distribution has made it very easy to communicate with your fans online. But PAX takes that next level and you can kind of meet these people you talk to, people that back your Kickstarter, people that uh, talk about your game on the forums. It's sort of like a, almost like a college radio station in that you can just go listen to this and get a bunch of new bands or games in a sense, sense to listen to and play. Um, as opposed to if you're paying attention to a lot of uh, mainstream media, you're only going to hear about maybe five, ten games in any few month period. There's a whole world of games out there that a lot of people don't know about and they're, they're, they're being shown right here. So go out and just try something you thought you would never try before and just do it, pull the trigger, you're probably going to find something pretty fun. Chris McQuinn. Phil Tibatoski. Nigel Lowry. I'm a designer at Dreambox Studios. I'm CEO and President of Young Horses. I am the Chief Axe Murderer at Devolver Digital. 